right, at this point, you should have your um, little grid stitched down. And now we're gonna continue with working with that long piece that you cut. And we're gonna have a right side and a wrong side. i get my threads out there. And uh, we're going to put right sides together. And when we put right sides together, we're gonna just put that edge. And in this short edge, we're gonna give it a half an inch seam allowance. And you're gonna back stitch on both ends, this end, that end. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. And again, the um, half inch mark on the Bernina is that first or that last short um, strike. The next one is five eighths. So you're gonna keep it with that. There we go, give it a few stitches, back stitch, and then go forward. And come to the end, and back stitch, and we're done. All right, so we have half inch seam allowance on the end. We clip your threads. And now we're gonna do the next part. Now, um, the next part can get really tricky, and I know you're just beginning, so a lot of the things we're doing, we're doing because um, you're probably new to this. Um, experienced sewers can just kind of go ahead and do some things. Now, because we're making our little box, um, we need some markings and we need to clip um, edges. Now, if you want your seam to be on the long side of the box, then you have to put this little V that you see here on the seam mark. If you want it to be on the short side, then you could just leave it like it is right here. Uh, I'm going to choose to put it on the back. So I'm going to just kind of um, mark or put right here in the back. See my seam right there, my seam line? I'm going to match up that little V notch right there with that seam. It should be more or less in the center. I'm going to move it over a little bit so that it's in the center. Okay, that's pretty close. Now I'm gonna put it sideways so I can get to it. I'm gonna get my scissors. And again, um, experienced sewers don't need to do this, but you see, if you'll see that line on the paper, don't sew past that. Use the tip of your scissors to cut and only up to that line. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Grab both layers, whoops, put it up to the edge of that fabric and cut that's all you got to do now you're going to do the same thing to the other side because um, you have to clip um, these because otherwise it's really hard to sew the corner of the little box so again I'm kind of gonna line up this um, edge oh, that sign doesn't seem to be so straight does it hopefully it is okay. Um, that is just above your half inch seam allowance. So you wanna make sure you do that right. Now on this piece, you're gonna do some markings. You're gonna take your pattern piece and you're gonna put it back over it. And hopefully it, it lines up right. You know, just kind of check your stripes to make sure it's lining up. And you're gonna mark the four corners of your pattern. And so I've got little spots there, little holes. You stick your pencil in that little hole. Oops, and it just broke, but that's okay. And so if you see, I do have little uh, marks there. Um, that's how I know to line up those little slits that I did over here with this. Um, and you're gonna see why we needed that space. Now I'm going to do, take um, my piece here, and I'm going to uh, line put right sides together. This right side and this is the right side. That's the wrong side for me anyway. And I'm gonna line it up here. And notice that I have that little slit. It's already wanting to open up. I'm gonna make that slip, uh, that little slit be at that point that I marked. And then I'm gonna take a uh, pin and put this side together so that I have this, um, those edges. This other cut should, if you, when you line up this edge, well, mine isn't quite lined up, but um, it looks like my mark might be a little bit short. So I'm just gonna give it a lot. Don't cut too much, because you cut too much, 
uh, you'll cut to the outside, the, the part that shows. I'm gonna line up that side. If you think you need to pin more, pin more. And uh, I'm going to pin this down. Now I'm gonna stitch. I'm gonna stitch from that point to this point, the, the little cut points. Um, and like I said, experienced sewer can do it a much, um, they can do it all in one shot. This is a little difficult. So you're gonna make sure your fabric from underneath is uh, not under the stitching area. You're gonna make your pin, your, your needle, um, be put, put it down right on that spot, that one point. And then you're gonna put your press foot down, give it a little back stitching, just a little. And again, you still have that half inch seam allowance and you're gonna bring it over to the other point. And uh, my drawing was a little uneven, so you see a little bit more on that side. It's not that, that detailed. So you get to that other point and you stop and you backstitch and you let go. You get off. So um, normally you could just continue going around the corners and do corner sewing. Now I'm going to, and, and just get rid of these little uh, messy um, things because otherwise um, they just kind of get confusion. Uh, so you see I sewed from point to point. I backstitched and I went to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing on this next side. This next side is going to be a little shorter. Uh, so I'm going to look for my, um, uh, you kind of got to twist it. It might be easiest to go to the opposite side. So let's go to the opposite side. I'm going to take my little corner and match it up with my dot. And I'm going to pin it down. And the other side should be fairly matching. Yep, it does. Okay, it's pretty close. And that'll make it a little easier in the end. So I'm, I'm pinning, I pinned both sides. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and stitch like I did before from those points. Back stitch, it's half inch all the way across. Uh, and I'm almost there and I'm back stitch and I'm gonna get out. Okay. And you're going to have to do the same thing to the bottom. Uh, again, I'm going to trim all this stuff so it doesn't get too fussy and confusing and I don't jam the machine. Okay. Okay. So now I've got two sides of my little square sewn together. And then I'm going to now, um, you can actually see how that the corner wants to spread. Now all I have to do is stitch the ends. You can pin it if you want to, but you see it lays pretty flat. Um, I'm just gonna put it in the machine and go ahead and put it at the half inch mark and back stitch and go to that other point. You gotta sew to that other point because it won't be a square. Okay. Um, we could clip the corners. I call this, uh, you know, just kind of uh, these, but you can do that later. Anyway, I just want to show you that. See, this side's pretty much already connected too. So let's go ahead and just did a stitch across that side. Oops, and you know what? I'm not sewing. <laughs> So let's go ahead and do our thread our machine again. Give me a second. I messed up. I messed up. Oh, don't want that happening. All right. See, it happens to experience sores too. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back and do the same thing I just did because I wasn't sewing. Okay, so now you should have all your sides sewn and it, you should have something that looks like a little hat. 
You're going to do the same thing to the bottom, but the bottom you're going to leave a section open because we got to stuff it. You're eventually going to turn this inside out and you'll eventually have your little 24 pin space. This is for your little pin cushion. So we're going to continue. I'm going to turn it back inside out because it's easier to sew that way. And I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom piece. And the bottom piece, I'm going to mark the front side, the right side, because um, that's the side that um, people are going to, or we're going to see. So I'm going to go ahead and mark my four spots. And then I'm going to go ahead and I kind of cut this one twice because I was uh, doing a sample with it or trying to figure out my pattern. So um, now I don't know which one it is. Let me... Hmm. Looks like it's that corner. All right, so I'm going to match up my corner. Matched up my, my corner with the dot. And I'm going to match up my other corner. I think that's right. I'm going to go ahead and stitch. And notice that I'm kind of holding this seam open. Because that's what you normally do whenever you're sewing. And always check underneath to make sure that your fabric is not folding underneath there and you're making a tuck, what we call a tuck. Okay, I think it was my second one that I went to. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna do the other side, just like we did before. That one, oops, I gotta go this way. Okay, I'm gonna match up my points again. I'm gonna match up my other side. And once I have those two things matched up, I can go onto the machine and do the points again and ignore my extra clipping that's on there. Um, like I said, this was the little sample I was doing and so it was um, the experiment so here I go I'm kind of almost done with the bottom side um, this time when I do things uh, when I before I um, I'm not gonna sew both ends I'm only gonna do one end because I'm gonna use that other end to stuff and I will show you what that is in a minute Okay, again, I'm going to um, go, go to the other side. I'm not even going to pin it. And I'm half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to stitch across from point to point. And I am almost done. All this stuff on the inside is not even going to show. So we don't have to worry about it too much. If you really, really, really want to get a nice sweet corner, you can clip the corners, but you don't have to. And that's uh, something that you know I would do. I'm not even gonna do it on this end because we're not done. So there we go. We should have a little box that looks like that little thing, but with that one end that's open still. So um, I'm gonna turn it inside out through that little hole that's there. And that's why it's important that you backstitch on these sides because when you start putting some pressure on this, um, it's going to want to um, unravel if you don't have that backstitching there, if you don't have that locking. Okay. From this point on, I'm not going to use a sewing machine. I'm going to push that back so that we have more space here to look at what we're doing. Okay. And you should start seeing your little box come to life and I used uh, the white I could have used matching thread and that would have made it even uh, nicer uh, I'm going to place a little piece of cardboard just uh, something off of you know things you get 
from the store or something. It's two and a half by one and five eighths. I'm gonna put that in the bottom simply because I want something to be a little flatter in the bottom um, and so that it kind of just stands a little bit better. So I'm gonna place that in that square part in the bottom and just manipulate it till, till you get it. Okay, and then we have to stuff it. We have to stuff it with uh, some filling. So you can get some, you know, you just need a handful of filling and you're gonna wanna um, just do a little bit at a time because this is a small opening. And just start filling it. And like I said, you want you want the cardboard to be on the bottom side of your pin cushion, and you're going to start seeing it. You're going to manipulate it as you go. Okay. Okay, and then let me kind of just give it a little more. We're not far from being done, which is good. And um, if you want to, you could, before you sew this bottom piece down, you could sew one side of Velcro on it so that you can Velcro it to something else. But I'm just going to use sticky Velcro and it'll be just fine. So I think I want a little bit more tighter in there, so I'm gonna add more. You know, you can make it as tight as you want it, or, you know, as bulky as you want it, or as soft, whatever. I kinda like a little firmer pin cushion, so it looks like I'm gonna put all of this in here. But you have to put it in a little at a time. You won't be able to pull it in, put it in at one shot. Okay, got it all in there. I see that's pretty good. Now you got to do something about this hole. So what you're going to do with this hole is you're going to, you know, you got everything situated in there, the cardboard situation in there. Put that in there um, and fold back the edges, kind of right at where the seam would be when the top one's already done there. And then you're gonna take needle and thread. You're gonna use a, a single thread. That means that one tail is hanging loose. And on this end, you'll put a little knot and um, just the usual, however that you make a knot, you make a knot and you'll have a knot in the end. Then you're gonna kinda, I kinda like to hide my knots inside. So I'm going to kind of uh, stick this inside and pull it out and then you're going to do a slip stitch or an invisible stitch or some kind of stitch to where that um, you can seal this up and nobody really even knows that you've um, you know you can do something well you can do it showing if you want to I don't care as long as you seal it I'm sorry you got to get in the view of the camera forget where I'm at sometimes. So I'm going on running along one edge and then I'm pulling it down to this other edge, which is nice having the cardboard there because it let, lets me know what the other edge is at. Kind of matching those uh, points, matching the point where it came out and matching the point where the needle goes in. And so, and I'm gonna go to the other side run it along the fold a little ways. And you see when I tightened it, it kind of just uh, went away, right? Whoops. Whoops, I almost lost my needle there. And again, I'm just going through. I'm trying to do this quickly so that I can not keep you too long. So if you want to make really pretty nice fine stitches and do matching thread, 
and that's a that'll make it nice too okay I'm just going to end it here just for the sake of um, getting it done for this video so I'm gonna take uh, like about three stitches in place it's called tacking and you could just tack it and of course if it was a matching color you probably wouldn't even notice it okay and then I'm going to go ahead and um, clip and I'm done I'm done I'm gonna put a little piece of sticky velcro here and the other sticky maybe on my machine somewhere uh, and then I'm gonna start filling my pins um, if, it doesn't matter what kind of pin it is it might be the little flat silver ones and so this is a way that you can keep track of how many pins you have and um, normally you don't need more than 24 pins if you do we can get you some more but um, there it is you're done